Hi, today I am going to discuss about the joint venture. Whenever two or more parties come together for uh, executing any venture, the concept of joint venture comes into picture. So, the parties together can form the joint venture and they can execute a joint venture agreement so that the things go smoothly later on. Now, what are the things, what are the questions we should be considered before entering into a joint venture or joint venture agreement? First of all, the entity is to be formed in whatever entity you want to carry on the venture or the business. Uh, for that, you have to decide about first of all the thing is capital. Which party is going to invest how much, what would be the their ratio of their capital that has to be decided upfront. For that, uh, any party may, might be having some technical knowledge or some uh, know-how that can, which can be transferred and the capital can come in that format also. So for that, it should be very clearly mentioned what would be the value of the, that uh, patent or know-how or that license to form the uh, percentage of capital. Once this is de decided, the main object has to be drafted clearly what the joint venture is going to do. After this, now formation of the board comes. How the board, board would be formed? Which party would nominate how many directors? And how the voting rights is going to be done? Which party would nominate any chairperson? The chairperson will have any uh, casting vote or second vote or not? What would be the frequency of the board meeting? What is there any quorum requirement for the board meeting? Specific quorum requirement apart from the Companies Act? Like uh, any party, if the, uh, for example, if one person, one director from each party doesn't come, then the quorum will not be completed. Some conditions might be put in like this. How the board proceedings would be done? These are the several things related to the board of directors of the company. Coming to the shareholders meeting, how the meeting would be con uh, convened, who would uh, send the notice and uh, who would be the chairperson for the annual general meeting, what is the voting percentage, what is the voting requirement, how the quorum would be formed, whether one person, one representative from each party is required or not. These are the things which are to be considered uh, regarding the shareholders meeting, what matters to be put in in the shareholders meeting, what matter will go to the board meeting, that can also be discussed. Apart from this, now we come the management of the, of the company, like who is going to appoint the managing director, how the managing director is going to operate, what would be his powers, how it is going to cons take consent from both the parties and the operation of the day-to-day -day management of the company. The auditors would be appointed from which party, auditor must be independent, so who will recommend, who will nominate or it would be taken as a consent. Now comes the transferability of the shares. This is a very important point. Uh, either party is holding shares in that joint venture. Now suppose one party wants to transfer the shares. How that would be done? There are several clauses like tag along right, tag drag along rights. Like in case one party wants to sell the shares, the other party will also tag along with that. Or in case the majority of the shareholders wants to sell the shares, the minority would be dragged automatically, means they should also sell their shares. These are the things then uh, coming to that lock-in period, is there any lock-in period required for the shares? Suppose for two years or three years, um, neither party can uh, transfer any shares. Then there is an adherence uh, clause for the transferee, means uh, if the shares are transferred to a third party, the third party also has to sign a deed of adherence that they all confirming that they also they have received the copy of the shareholders agreement and they agree to uh, abide by the terms of the shareholders agreement and they, the terms are applicable to uh, the new coming sh uh, shareholder of the company. These are the basic things. Now there is a provision that certain business activities that should not be conducted without consent of both the parties. These matters are called reserved items. Reserved items can be many as per the discussion of the, as per the consent of both the parties. Some of the reserved items are increase in authorized share capital of the company, increase further issue of shares, the appointment of auditor, any change in the memorandum or articles of association, any change in the business of the company or any change in the managing director, 
taking any loan from the bank or from friends, uh, financial institutions, any major expenditure in the company. These are the some of the major points, uh, appointment of CEO, appointment of CFO, they all can be covered under the reserve item where consent of both the parties are required and in case it is not consented upon, the matters will not be approved or not be carried on by the company. Now, in case further funding is required, how the funding will come in the company, that has to be discussed. Further funding can, can, uh, can come in as a form of loan or from further equity. Whether dilution is acceptable to both the parties, how the dilution would be done, what would be the valuation of the shares, these are the things uh, that, which are to be incorporated in a joint venture agreement and these are the terms which is to be discussed upfront. Apart from the, these, there must be some other day-to-day -day operations which as per the need of the uh, business uh, partners that can also be arranged in the uh, your JV agreements. These are in short the detail of the JV agreement or joint venture which I am sure if you consider at the beginning your business will grow and it will be carried on smoothly. All the best. Thank you very much.